The hot end is attached to the bottom of the extruder. This last screw that holds the extruder in place also holds in place the hot end. You can see the screw through this cutaway and it grips the hot end. This gap in the aluminum will also close slightly and pinch in place the hot end. Coming off the hot end are two sets of wires. The clear wire is for a thermistor. And a thermistor is a thermal resistor and it simply reads the temperature of this hot end. The other set of wires, the black wires, is for power. You need the hot end, the thermistor cable, the hot end power cable, and one M3 25 millimeter screw. Take your wire extensions and just kind of lay them side by side and make sure that the black tips are on the same end. Those black tips are what connects to the hot end. The extensions are attached to the hot end later, but it's worth checking which extension goes with which connector. The red and black extension will attach to the black wires on the hot end. The white and black extension will attach to the clear wires. In each pair, one connector has a little foot that rides over a nib on the other connector. Conveniently, the hot end has one foot and one nib connector, so you cannot connect to the wrong extension accidentally. Unlike motors and hot ends, these wires are unique. No other connector looks like them, so it's easy to identify even without a label. If you want to label them, mark the red and black one with H, because this is your hot end power, and mark the black and white one with T, because this is for the thermistor that actually reads the temperature of the hot end. These wires need to be fed through this little opening here, but to get to it, we have to take off this base. Now I mentioned before that you might have this screw up here seated into this base. Just watch out for that when you go to kind of loosen this up. So loosen this up and just feed the wires through that notch. Now you can do this without taking the base completely off, just loosening it just a tiny bit. But I'm actually gonna pull mine aside completely so that you can see how these wires feed through. Get them into that little notch. Make sure they are all the way down in that notch. You do not wanna pinch them when you reattach the base. So I've got mine all the way clear into that notch. Once the wires are in the notch, you can reattach the base of the extruder, but don't tighten it all the way down. We're gonna go ahead and get it positioned on the right-hand side and then tighten everything in place. The wires completely fill the space you have. It's a perfect fit. Just make sure that you don't have them coming out over the edge and getting pinched here. I can actually feel that my wires slide in and out. It takes a little bit of work, but I can slide them. As long as they're not pinched, you're ready to attach the hot end. The hot end is gonna go into this opening up here. And when we put the screw into the other side, it's gonna actually pinch the hot end in place. It's gonna feed this top side through. And the tricky part here is actually getting it to lay nice and flat. I've noticed that the bulges down here that the insulation is, they actually can kind of slant you a little bit with these little screws down here. So just slide it in whichever way feels straight. Check the extruder from the top to make sure the hot end has come up all the way into position. I find that I actually like not only to put it in with the wires up top here, but it also lays nice and flat for me that way. Uh, this gives me plenty of room to be able to get this connected and pull the slack through. If I put it all the way to the left, so these guys were farthest to the left, I actually would kind of have it bubble out to the side and then snake back. Position it however seems best for you. Then take your M3 25 millimeter screw, put it on the right hand side and tighten it in place. You really want this screw to feel firm as you tighten it in place. You don't want to over tighten it, but you definitely need it to feel firm because it is holding your hot end in place. When you're finished with the right hand screw, you can tighten in place the left hand screw that we only partially tightened before. Grab the hot end, give it a little bit of a tug. You shouldn't feel it move at all. If it does move, reposition it and tighten down that screw. Take the clear wire. It's gonna to connect to the black and white extension. Make sure the foot is on the same side as that little nib. Then take the black wire and it connects to the red and black extension. And again, make sure that the foot is on the appropriate side as the little nib. Then go ahead and pull the slack through the back here. That's why I mentioned before it was so important that you didn't pinch these wires. If you did pinch them, you do risk that you could accidentally tear a wire. So I've pulled the slack through and now these wires are nice and well routed. Here's a little quality check to make sure everything is installed correctly. The hot end does not wiggle free. It comes all the way to the top of the metal here. These wires have very little slack because it's all been pulled through the notch. This screw drops into place in a little tiny opening here. If your screw does not drop into place, then you need to tighten it down just a tiny bit and it will drop into that opening. If everything looks good, you're ready to move on.